In this week's episode of the Stock Scores Market Minutes, we're going to talk about the most dangerous time to buy a stock, what you want to avoid. Then I'm going to do my regular analysis of the stock markets, the crypto markets, the commodity markets. We'll look at fear. We're going to then take a look at the day trade of the week on LFMD and the lessons that come from that. And we'll do a market scan in search of longer term opportunities. That's all coming up. So when is it dangerous to buy a stock? Well, as stocks move higher, they tend to move in a linear upward trend. When emotion gets involved and people are buying with the fear of missing out or maybe short sellers are frantically trying to cover their positions, that linear trend can go into a parabolic trend, a trend that curves up and away. And in that scenario, you're really having a stock that's going up because of emotional buying. And it's very likely that in those parabolic trends, the stock will correct downward fairly soon. And so you want to avoid those situations where the trend goes from linear to parabolic, because again, they will almost always correct downward. Now, it's always easier when I show this on a chart. So let's do that. Here is a chart of RRD and we were buying the stock back in here when it was breaking out and then maybe here adding to the position on a break from a pennant pattern. But notice that this trend went from linear and then it started getting steeper and then to the point where it was parabolic. So buying up here when the trend has gone from a straight line to a curve, that is very dangerous. And you can see what happened shortly after that we had a fairly large gap to the downside. If we look at another example, this is a Canadian stock that is currently just going parabolic. So here was a linear trend. Sometimes linear trends can get a little steeper, that's okay. And it's okay when stocks break out of sideways ranges like this, but when the, tr when the price gets far above the linear trend line, so when we're way up here and the linear trend line is way down here, that is a parabolic trend and you do not want to be a buyer of that. You can see even here the trend went parabolic and when it does so it almost always comes back to the linear trend line which is what it did. And that's actually a buying opportunity. We talked about that a little bit last week when trend comes back to the trend line or when price comes back to the trend line we often bounce off of it. So be very careful not to buy those parabolic trends. Often It'll seem like the best time because everybody on the internet and all the chat rooms and that sort of thing are very positive, but it's usually uh, a sign that the stock is about to correct downward and markets too will do this as well. All right, let's get into this week's analysis of the overall markets. And as always, we will start with the S&P 500. We had some pretty decent volatility last week. You'll notice that coming into this last week, we were fairly quiet in a sideways range. And then we had these substantial moves down lower to start the week on concerns about inflation. Now we've seen those concerns actually start to take hold in the market in recent weeks. We've seen gold moving higher, oil has been moving higher for a few months, and the stock market has started to show some concern about inflation and what that might mean for interest rates and the likelihood that interest rates will have to go up to combat higher inflation. So this uncertainty certainly made the trading a little bit more difficult the past week because we had lots of choppy action up and down. Uh, we've managed to break the, the little downward trend that we had for about three days. We broke that on Friday, so we're coming back into that more stable pattern. But I think some caution is warranted going into next week because that heightened volatility does indicate that buyers are a little nervous and that could lead to more selling pressure. Now, when we look at the longer term trend line, what you see is everything's fine. The linear upward trend or the upward sloping channel is still intact. And, you know, we came back a fair bit last week, but we did not break below the upward trend line. And by the end of the week, we had made back quite a bit of those losses. So the long term trend is still good, still bullish there. Looking at the Russell 2000, 
it didn't have as far to fall as the S&P 500. And so it did have some weakness, but it's still, you know, inside this sort of sideways rectangular range in a very short term basis. It broke its pullback on Friday. So small caps look, I would say, stable. There's not a lot of excitement there. We have been trending sideways for getting on now four months. And so there's not a lot of action there. And hopefully we'll get a breakout through this resistance from a rising bottom in the weeks ahead. And then that'll bring a little bit of action. Sorry, this isn't the Russell. This is the NASDAQ 100 tech stocks. The Russell actually looks quite similar. You can see here we've got that sideways trading range. We broke the pullback. So, you know, those those large cap tech Russell small cap stocks, they're not keeping up with the S&P 500. And really, those to me are the speculators stock markets, the the indexes that represent what stock traders and speculators are doing. And we've been stuck in that sideways range for a few months. And you'll probably know if you do that kind of trading, that market action has been a little low or slow lately. Um, and we need a breakout from this range to get things going again. All right. Continuing along here is the Canadian markets. And this is a chart of the TSX 60 on an hourly basis going back 30 days. And again, notice the volatility over here. It's pretty quiet. And then we've had lots of volatility in there. And that shows that again, uncertainty is heightened. Now we've rallied pretty well on Friday coming into some resistance from the highs at the start of the week. I expect that stocks will get stuck there. The good news is the bottoms are rising, but the bad news is we're coming into some short term resistance. So we may get a little bit of a pullback early next week. Looking at the longer term chart, though, everything's still fine. We're in an upward sloping channel. The trend is up and therefore longer term investors should stay long until there is a break of the upward trend. Now looking at the TSX Venture, which represents those micro cap stocks, and there you can see one of those parabolic trends. It went curving higher, the parabolic trend was broken, and since then we've had this pessimism building, falling tops indicating that the sellers are in control. Until we can break this downward pullback, I wouldn't get too optimistic about the micro cap stocks in Canada, and if we were to break down through this support zone with a sharp move down, that would indicate more selling pressure is likely to come. So watch for that in the near term. All right, now it's time to move on to currencies and we'll start with the US dollar, which has been sliding lower for the last six weeks, but it is now pretty much at support. So we should see the US dollar bounce back soon. Hasn't happened yet, but let's see if it does. Now, Bitcoin, I warned about Bitcoin four weeks ago when the upward trend line was broken. It too went parabolic and then it pulled back to the trend line and it broke the upward trend line. And so I've been a little bit cautious about the Bitcoin chart for a few weeks. Well, this past week, we had another strong week of selling and that's the follow through from that signal. I think we could still get more selling pressure. I think you want to be cautious with Bitcoin. Now, last week, somebody asked if I would also review the chart of Ethereum, which is another cryptocurrency. And here is that um, linear trend line that has gone parabolic. And it did something that I call a bursting bubble. So when you hit a new high um, in a parabolic trend, but close below the open, which is what a red candle means, you're closing below the open with volume that is fairly strong. That's usually a sign that there's going to be a pullback. And then three days later, you got the pullback. We haven't broken the linear upward trend line yet, so we're still OK. But I think best case scenario is near term. This uh, cryptocurrency is likely to go sideways. All right, on to commodities. And there's the gold chart. And as I talked about at the top, we do have that inflation concerns. And of course, gold always a hedge for inflation. You can see we've rallied up to the upward or the downward trend line and we're stalling there. The question is, do we stall and then break the downward trend line? That would be a positive. Or do we roll over and retest the lows? That would be a negative. Don't know which is going to happen yet. Most likely, you know, if we want to talk probability, more likely that we will move lower off of this trend line. But until I start to see the sign of that happening, I don't really make a trade off of it. Just something to watch for next week. Now, oil has been trending sideways for a couple of months. It had a nice little run higher, and now we're sort of building a little base here. And what we want to watch for is a breakout through 18 
on the BNO, which represents Brent oil as an ETN. If it breaks out, then we're probably gonna move up to this range around the 21 zone. So the momentum is up. We're building a base more likely to move to the upside than the downside. And finally, the fear chart. We had a little spike in fear midweek as the market corrected lower, but fear has fallen back into its normal range. And so therefore fear is relatively low. So the outlook then, I remain bullish long-term on US stocks. I've lowered my short-term rating to neutral because of that volatility. And the same can be said for the Canadian market. Gold, I remain long-term neutral, but short-term bullish. It is knocking on the door of that trend line of resistance. And then oil, bullish on both timeframes. The volatility last week indicates there's some uncertainty coming in among investors, but those long-term trends still remain up, at least for the S&P 500. The NASDAQ, the Russell, they're kind of in that sideways trend right now. It's really important that we avoid chasing strength and instead watch for those stocks that are just starting upward trends, that are breaking from low volatility, that are surprising the market. There's not many of them, but every week there's a couple. We wanna focus on the stocks showing those signs of alpha, which are you know, really strong abnormal volume, abnormal price action, when before the market didn't have any interest in them. Now, as I said, gold is at a critical resistance level, so we'll need to watch and see if that downward trend line can be broken. And oil's building a nice little base for the next leg up, fear is low. All right, now we're gonna jump to the day trade of the week, and this week's day trade of the week is LFMD, which was a pretty hot stock on Friday and it gave us two entry signals using different strategies. So one strategy, as I often talk about each week, is the action candle, which are the little pink dots there. And of course, any of my students that want to run TradeStation, if you're an active trader student of mine, I'll give you that indicator so you can put the action candles on your charts. Or you can watch our active live service where we see every stock that's making an action candle as it happens, and in this case, LFMD made that at 932. That was a pretty good setup. It wasn't ideal because there was a fairly large gap into that. So sometimes I prefer just to wait for a second chance, another buy signal that comes after the initial one where I think that the probability of success is a little bit higher. And we got that on this break of a pullback and there was two. There was one break of a pullback there and then the second break of a pullback there. So those were alternative entries on this stock but what made it worth doing that for you know watching for these pullbacks was the very abnormal volume that lfmd was trading with now just a moment ago i said one of the signs of alpha is that the stock is trading abnormal volume now remember this is a two minute chart and so this is 9 30 in the morning eastern time on friday and look at how the volume was so much higher than the previous day and that's what the algorithm looks for is that abnormal uh, action that tells us that the stock is in play, that it is attracting a crowd. Now, if we just use the original entry as our uh, choice for economics, for every $100 of risk, you would buy 380 shares. That was $2,873 of capital. And of course, you can margin that because it is a stock over $3. So with margin, you would only have to put up $960 of capital. By the end of the day, the stock was at 4.7 times its risk, which meant a $470 gain on $960 of capital. That's a nice little 49% return on a one day hold. Well, if we are longer term trading, if we're position trading, sometimes even swing trading, we're not looking for action candles on the two minute chart. We might be looking at something like that on the daily chart. And I'm gonna show you with the market scan tool how you can scan for those. So I'm gonna jump into the stock scores market scan. And we're going to, of course, you have to be a, a member of stock scores to use this tool. And there's information on the website on how you can become a member. Um, but what we're gonna do is build our own scan this week. And so the, the basic idea behind an action candle is it is an abnormal day up with abnormal volume. Now we can add in some other filters so that we look at better quality stocks. So I might say 15 day resistance, I wanna break out. I also want to make sure that the stock closed above its open. So I might set the candle to bullish candle, which means it closed above the open. 
And then I wanna check for liquidity. I don't want stocks that hardly ever trade. So I'm gonna put in a thousand trades a day. That's not shares, it's a thousand trades per day. And let's just only look for stocks over a dollar. We don't have to do that, but that's an option, okay? So I've built my own scan. I could give it a name. I could call it test for May the 17th. I won't do that, but if you, if you do wanna save a scan, you just put in a name, click on save scan, click that to yes and then run the market scan, and it will not only save it, but it'll give you the results of that scan. And here you have 22 stocks from the North American markets that basically made an action candle at a 15-day high. Well, then we're gonna review those charts in search of good chart patterns. So here we have a stock that is breaking from what's called a pennant pattern. You can see the abnormal price action there breaking out. Volume was good, it wasn't really great, so I wouldn't say that this is the best example. I'd give this a six out of 10. Moving along, this stock had a very abnormal day on Friday. However, it's not breaking from low volatility. We want stocks that are breaking from bases. And here you can see that right there. That was a nice basing pattern when it broke ah, about three weeks ago. That was the time to consider it. Now you're getting the reward for having taken the risk back there. So you don't want to chase trends higher. I'm happy to hold that stock, but we want better quality in terms of the pattern. This stock is breaking up into pessimism. We don't want that either. Even though it's breaking the downward trend line, there's been no build of a rising bottom yet. These are all aspects of chart pattern recognition that I teach in the different courses that we do at Stock Scores. And of course, when you're a member of Stock Scores, you have access to all that education material, which helps you to use these tools and really identify the stocks with the very best potential. So as I go through these market scan results, I'm looking for a very specific kind of pattern, a stock breaking from low volatility with abnormal activity and from optimism. Here's a good example of one. SNC Lavalin has a rising bottom, that's optimism, had resistance here, it had low volatility, it has abnormal volume and abnormal price. So everything is there on the daily chart. However, we always check the three year weekly chart as well when we are con uh, considering position trades because we wanna see where other areas of resistance might be. So while I really like the daily chart, it actually isn't quite as good when I look at the weekly chart because of that resistance level right there. And I think that may stall the stock in the short term. I still think this is a pretty decent turnaround chart. I would give this a six out of 10. And we'll just finish up here. That one's pretty good. Uh, this was a stock that I featured to my um, subscribers a few months ago and it's in a nice trend. I like to buy them on the first break. This is about the second or third break, so it's not ideal, it's a good hold. But let's see if there's anything fresh. This looks pretty decent. You can see we've got rising bottoms, that's optimism, breaking through resistance, with abnormal price action, volume is not really strong. And then the other issue is this stock has been trending higher for a while. So you're coming to the party a little bit late. Let's take a look at that three year, which we always like to do. And there you can just see how steep that upward trend is already. So if I own this stock, I might buy more with that breakout, but I don't think I would initiate a position there just because the trade has already risen so much. I think it's more of a hold than it is a new entry. All right, so that's the process. You just cycle through charts based on the uh, things that I teach you to look for in these different courses. The market scan tool is how you can go from, you know, seven to 10,000 stocks and whittle it down to a list of a very manageable number like this, 22, all with that market scan tool. We'll hope that you've enjoyed this week's video. Leave a comment and uh, let me know what you thought of it. And also, of course, hit that subscribe button, like, do all that stuff you're supposed to do. I appreciate it. Hope that you've enjoyed this week's video. Trade well.